Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. Today, my special guest is Mia Sin, and she's a dietitian. She shares healthy recipes and tips on the internet daily, right, Mia? Yes, at Nutrition by Mia on Instagram, TikTok, nutritionbymia.com. Share um, healthy recipes. A lot of them are five ingredients or less, nutrition tips daily, and I'm also um, on different TV programs throughout the country, weekly sharing tips as well. Great. And uh, one of the reasons we have her here today is because April 1st, which is coming up shortly, is National Sourdough Bread Day, right? And yes, uh, that's right. So there's a, a lot of people don't realize this, but there are a lot of healthy benefits to eating sourdough bread, right? Yes, I think a lot of people kind of overlook sourdough, especially when it comes to bread. They think whole grains is where it's at in terms of nutrition. And that is true. You know, as a dietitian, I recommend that people consume at least half of their grains be whole grains. But sourdough has its own sort of unique benefits. And sourdough is my favorite type of bread. Not only is it delicious, but it offers great nutrition. So, um, you know, one of them is that that slow fermentation process it lowers the uh, this compound called phytic acid which is an anti-nutrient and it's found in a lot of plant-based foods like nuts seeds grains um, legumes and what it does is it binds to certain minerals making them less bioavailable to the body like magnesium calcium and so that fermentation process helps to lower phytic acid, it makes those nutrients in sourdough bread more bioavailable or easier for our body to absorb and utilize. So that's that's a big one when it comes to sourdough bread. Uh, it's also lower in gluten than a lot of breads. And I know a lot of people are looking out for gluten. They yes. don't do very well on it. It's kind of harder to digest. Um, and so sour that fermentation process also helps break down gluten. So those that are sensitive to gluten may find that sourdough is easier on digestion. Right. Um, it's you know, lower glycemic bread as well. Um, the fermentation lowers the glycemic index. So that means a slower, steadier increase in blood sugar levels after consumption. Uh -huh. And then um, another big one is gut health. So studies show that sourdough bread uh, acts as a prebiotic and prebiotics are essentially the food for the good bacteria in the gut. Uh -huh. um, it helps to fuel those good bacteria and healthy gut means better digestion, better immune function, overall health. So there's a lot to love about sourdough when it comes to nutrition. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. So do they, um, I, I know sourdough, you know, whenever I buy sourdough bread, it's usually made with traditional like white flour. Does anybody yes. make it with like a whole wheat type of, or a whole grain flour? And is there a reason that they do or don't? Can't. Yes. Can they not do? Right. So I really like the brand La Brea Bakery. They have their own signature sourdough starter. It's the same starter that was used when it was originally developed in 1989. And it's just flour, water, salt, and wild yeast from the skin of organic grapes. And um, all of their loaves are made using that formula. And, you know, you can use different types of flour so you can achieve um, that, you know, whole grain sort of bread and uh, everything is made using that starter. So you're getting those great benefits. Right. Um, but just different taste textures. Exactly. Um, yeah. So if somebody great. wants to do like a whole wheat, whole grain, then, they, you know, there is a sourdough bread that um, they yes. can whole with the whole wheat then the whole grain, whole grain bread. So tell us, um, I guess we if we can share, you know, spring and summer are coming and everybody starts realizing, hey, I should have eaten healthier in the winter because <laughs> now they want to be outside and, you know, everybody wants to wear yes. shorts or bathing suits and all that. So um, any special like tips on for anyone that wants to kind of get back into healthy eating gradually? Because I don't think it's something that people can do really quickly. But yes. Right. Yeah. I think a, a great way to look at just healthy eating in general is wow. um, what can I add to my diet? Mm -hmm. So instead of what can I subtract? So adding more vegetables, adding more um, lean protein uh, and balancing your plate. I'm a big advocate for that. It's just a really simple way to simplify healthy eating. So, I mean, you can take sourdough bread and you can pair it with a lean protein and maybe some healthy fats, a little bit of 
veggies as well. And you're getting this balanced meal that's going to balance your blood sugar, keep you satiated and won't have you like looking for a snack in between meals. So just making sure you're getting a variety of nutrients on your plate. Um, it's just really approachable way to, you know, look at nutrition and healthy eating overall uh-huh. for spring, summer and beyond. Any ideas for just like quick, healthy snacks? I think that's where people fail a lot. Like they just get hungry and they just quickly grab for anything. And um, yes, but anyway, do you do you have any tips for that? Having snacks like at hand so you don't start eating unhealthy when you're hungry and you need something quick. Yes. So with snacks, uh, you typically want to pair two food groups to build a balanced snack. So maybe a protein with something that has fiber in it, that's going to give you your most nutrition bang for your buck, uh, lowest in calories, but the most satiating. So that combination is really good. So it could be like some low fat yogurt, plain yogurt with fruit or a piece of toast with peanut butter, uh, apple with peanut butter. So just pairing those two food groups, that's going to help balance blood sugar, carry you until your next meal and not ruin your appetite as well. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb for those healthy snacks. Exactly. That's great. And I love it. They're all real foods and people don't realize they're always going to grab like these plastic bags of chemicals when it's just so quick to grab a piece of fruit, yogurt, um, even the toast with all some, foods. you know, peanut butter. Now you can even get peanut butter in like small peanut butter, almond butter in little packs. So yes. they're really quicker quick, a quick way to get your snacks, healthy snacks. That's great. All right. Well, Mia, thank you so much. So tell people where they can find you online. Yes. You can follow me on Instagram at nutrition by Mia and head to my website, nutrition by Mia.com. I share healthy recipes, nutrition tips daily. Great. All right. I'll be sharing that on the website, the Maria Liberati show.com also in case everybody did not get that all right mia thanks so much for being here and happy national sour bread dough day yes thank you so much for having me okay thanks and did you know that it was national sourdough bread day this week and here's some interesting tips about sourdough bread or rather an interesting history about sourdough bread because it boasts a long and fascinating history likely dating back to the very beginnings of bread making itself. It had ancient origins from 3700 BC to 1500 BC. There's evidence that suggests that sourdough might be as old as bread itself. The earliest discovery of sourdough bread comes from Switzerland, dating back to 3700 BC. Around the same time, the Egyptians are credited with accidentally discovering sourdough when wild yeast spores from the air landed on exposed dough, causing it to ferment and rise. In 1500 BC to 700 AD, sourdough became a staple bread throughout the ancient world. The Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans all adopted sourdough techniques, with the Romans even refining oven-building technologies specifically for sourdough. And that's not all. So also... In the Dark Ages, which is 700 AD to 1100 AD, with the fall of the Roman Empire, the knowledge of sourdough bread making techniques largely disappeared in Europe. However, there is evidence to suggest that sourdough continued to be made in some regions. In the 1100s AD to the 19th century, sourdough returned. The profession of baker re-emerged in Europe around the 1100s, bringing sourdough back into the spotlight. During this time, Barm, B-A-R-M, which which is a, a type of sourdough starter, was used in Northern Europe as a leavening agent. Then, the Industrial Revolution happened and the invention of commercial yeast in the 19th century offered a faster and more consistent way to make bread. 
this led to a decline in the popularity of sourdough, especially with large-scale bakers. However, sourdough remained a tradition in certain regions like San Francisco during the gold rush, where prospectors carried their sourdough starters with them. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in sourdough bread. Home bakers are rediscovering the slow fermentation process and the unique flavors and texture it creates. Sourdough's natural fermentation process is also seen as a healthier or alternative to commercially produced breads. So the next time you bite into a slice of sourdough bread, remember you're enjoying a bread with a rich history that stretches back thousands and thousands of years. Thanks for listening to this week's episode and thanks to Mia Sin, my special guest, and thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle. And just want to mention that the Maria Liberati Show will now be syndicated to WWDB Radio in Philadelphia as of May 4th. We'll be starting. If you're in the Philadelphia area, you can hear the show on Saturdays, starting Saturday, May 4th at 1.30 to 2 p.m. But you can also find it online on the WWDB radio site as well as hearing it as a podcast. And don't forget, you can also see videos of most of the podcasts at the Maria Liberati Show channel on YouTube and on the Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati channel on Roku. And you can find me also at marialiberati.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Pinterest at Maria Liberati, on Twitter or X at Maria Liberati, and as mentioned on my Roku channel, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, on Vimeo at Maria Liberati, and as mentioned, the YouTube channel, The Maria Liberati Show show and the website for the podcast the maria liberati show.com and my gourmand world award-winning book series the basic art of italian cooking can be find at, found at maria liberati.com and uh, you can find it also at art of living prima media.com and really anywhere books are sold online And until next week, peace, love, and pasta.